Grazing management, the areas of improvement. I'm Michael O'Donovan. This is uh, Michael Egan. So, like, what we're talking about really is, I suppose, and it's following on from probably board, uh, the first three boards, uh, well, the first two boards, I suppose, getting better at grazing. You know, some guys have expanded a lot in the last couple of years. Some guys are probably going to consolidate, but I suppose ultimately what we want to do is grow more grass in the system, have more home-produced feed coming from inside the farm gate and reducing, you know, imports of feed from through the farm gate. Um, I suppose ultimately the best source of feed is the protein that you come in from grazed grass, right? Ultimately, the three foundations from this board is, you know, if you don't measure, how can you improve it? And that goes down to Donna with his EBI, it goes down to uh, Brendan with his sustainability as regards soil fertility, nitrogen input, and our, our own thing, you know, like in, in football matches, why do they keep the score, you know? If you're scoring nothing, you won't win any match. And it's the same thing here, if you're not growing grass, if you don't measure it, well, you can't really improve it. And I suppose ultimately that's the grass, grass 10 is, that's, that's the Grass 10 project is about. And grass utilisation, our target is about 80%. And then I suppose for, from, from a dairy farmer, any farmer is interested in what's the bottom line going to increase by. Ultimately, what we're, we're talking about, for every tonne of grass dry matter, you know, for every extra tonne of grass dry matter, that's about worth 173 euro uh, per hectare uh, to the farm. So we know that if you can increase grass utilisation, if you can get better at grazing management, it's going, to, it's going to make more to your bottom line. And much of this is coming from extra milk output, but also lower feed costs. So I've dealt with the grass protein, homegrown feed. I suppose, what's the farm able to grow? You know, if you're going to put more cows into the farm, can the farm sustain that? And that's a big question. And, uh, you know, in, in real simplistic terms, you know, what we see between farms in grass production is about eight ton difference. So just picture two of those cows up there in that grass demo. That's the difference in grass production between the highest producing farm and the lowest producing farm. The feed to produce, the feed to have two more cows on the farm. So it's huge, a huge difference. And there's, there's, there's in-farm differences as well. You know, the, the difference between the higher producing paddocks and the lower producing paddocks. And like following on to, from board two, if we're going to get no, more nutrient use efficient on the farms, we're going to, it it's really going to have to come from grazing management. We can say it will come from protected urea and low, low slurry emissions um, systems, but ultimately we're going to have to utilize more grass. And that, that is really, you know, the, the key thing that has to improve on farms. And people talk about practice change. You know, that is the real practice change that has to happen at, fa at farm level. Okay, and what, what do we learn from these higher producing farms? Well, the first thing we know is that, you know, they have a long grazing season and, and that's a real grass KPI for them. You know, they're starting grazing in February and probably, you know, stopping or stalling in mid to late November. And sometimes that's early December as, as it was last year. And I suppose ultimately it's, it's about high soil fertility. And, you know, you know, soil fertility is more important than receding in my book. You know, we, I've done a lot of work in grass, grass varieties and, and that, that, that has, takes up a lot of our time. But if you have low soil fertility, grass variety won't show you much difference. If high so soil fertility, that's where you see the differences in grass cultivars. And like, it's a bit like buying a second-hand cam. If there's a good service history with it, you know, she's going to last you. If there's not, she won't. And that's where there. It's about four years old. You know, I, it's high in pH, about 6.3. P, the, the, the P is soil index 3 and the K is soil index 4. That's why there's clover inside in it. And there wouldn't be clover inside in it if it wasn't there. The other part about it is, you know, grazing infrastructure, and you're going to see this below in another dem demo. You know, if you're a cow walking the paddocks, can you get in and get off paddocks? You know, are you, walk are you walking too far? You know, is the paddock set up? And we see from pasture base about 20% of the paddocks on farms are set up for the, area, for the number of cows that are on those farms. So there's a bit of work on, on, on infrastructure needed and there's an infrastructure booklet produced today. Ultimately, about measurements, the more walks that go, goes in, the better. The, the, more, the more data that you have, that you can make decisions with, the better you have. And that's what these lads have. First rotation and early April finish. Stocking rate linked to the farm output and concentrate level to, linked to grass demand. And, you know, concentrate is, li is like everything, you know. So, you know, last year a lot of concentrate li li went in and, uh, and um, in some cases there's a bit of a hangover from that, you know, there's... Got used to feeding six kilos, maybe we'll feed six more. But, you know, ultimately, you feed when you need it. And if you don't need it, you know, maybe she can do without it. I was looking at these cows here, and you'll see it below. There's cows doing one and a half, and the cows at farm level doing, you know, 1.9, 1.95 kilos of milk solids, no concentrate, half kilo of concentrate, just carrying Calmag. So, you know, we link concentrate to grass demand, and Mick is going to deal with that in a minute. 
on the grass growth curve from pasture base, what we see again looking up at the cows in the demo, the black cow up there, that's the difference between you see national farms, survey grass production and pasture based farms. They can carry more cows because they can produce more grass. And that's very simply. If you can produce the cows, if you can produce the grass, you know, you can have the cows. If you can't produce the gas, well, it's going to come from imported feed, and that's going to be a cost. And you can see here last year, um, if you were here this time last year, what you'd see is cows eating silage. Uh, there'd, be no, there'd be no open day here. So thanks be to God we, didn't, we don't have a repeat of that. So we lost about a half a tonne of grass dry matter, or the farms in the country lost about half a tonne of grass dry matter in spring, and about three tonne here. And some farms, you know yourselves, you know, in, you know, in, in, in South Leinster re region, they, they lost more grass than that. And like this year so far, it hasn't hit any high spots, you know, probably at about 80, 75, 80 this week, but we never got to any, any real peak yet. But ultimately for us in grazing, it's about, you know, putting some measurement on it, putting some management in place as regards, you know, what level of pasture cover you want the cows going into, what residuals you want them hitting, hitting. And then I suppose if you're in surplus or in a deficit, ultimately, you know, you know I suppose grazing about is, is about responding, you know, whether it's nitrogen going out, whether it's putting out fertile, um, P and K, whether it's coming in with bales or whether it's coming in, you know, with, with supplement at different points when you need to do that. I suppose that's what, you know, grazing management is probably not the easiest thing in the world on the farm. But, but we can all get better at it. So, you know, looking again at, at, at production from pasture base in 2017, I suppose the crucial thing for us is this is the proportion of farms, this is the, the, the grass dry matter production. 30% of the farms grew 14 tonne of grass dry matter. And you can see here the high producing farms, about 10% were up up at the 17 tonne of grass dry matter level. And again, there was about, you know, 13% down here between 10 and 11 tonne. So ultimately what you want to do is you want to take these lads further and these lads further over here. Now last year, 18, this 14 went back to 10. I suppose ultimately that's the yearly variation that we, that we, ha that we had to deal with last year. Board 3, Dunn and Stephen, they talked, you know, about EBI and where EBI is going and how it has improved. And ultimately, you know, right, Perennial Rygrass, we've got the Pasture Profit Index. And now I suppose we're moving to clover swards and having clover in the swards. And there's about six years' work done by Deirdre Hennessy in Moore Park and another four years done with Brian McCarthy in, in Clonakilty. And ultimately what we're looking at, if you have a clover inclusion annualised at about 20% across the year, so that's about 10% in spring and about 25, 30% in autumn, you know, what we're seeing with that, the response is about 10% more milled solids per hectare produced. And some, that's about 35 kilos of milled solids more per cow. And ultimately, you know, what's that worth to, worth to the, the farm system? That's worth about 150 euro per hectare. And you'll see those swords there adjacent to the milking powder below. So that difference in milled solids, not really evident in the spring. It's evident from June onwards. So you have cows probably, you know, still maintaining 1.8, 1.8. 1.9 kilos mill solids and cows dropping off in grass only swards. So I suppose ultimately this is probably a, an area of opportunity for us once we have that in place and good grazing management. You know, clover is not the easiest, it's not, it's not simple to, to manage and you probably have to be even better to manage grass clover swards than just pure grass swards. And then it will give us, in the, it will give us, I'm not saying that we have it sorted, but it will give us, you know, adaptions to nitrogen usage during the mid-season period. We're going to still need nitrogen in early spring to kick off the growth on the farm, you know, and that nitrogen is really important. But mid-season, when we get clover active and, and, and it's mineralizing nitrogen and, and fixing nitrogen from the, from the atmosphere, well, we can, we can look at strategies of, 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 of maybe um, taking it down slightly. Thanks, Mick. So I'm going to go through this table here and, and, and the second half of the f second board. Uh, but, but the first thing, and you've heard it, that the first two boards already, and I suppose it's been about self-sufficient and, and stocking rate and what is your farm capable of growing. And I suppose Mick asked it at the start as well. The first question that we need to ask ourselves is, what is your farm currently growing? What do you need to grow? And what is your farm capable of carrying stocking rate? And if you don't know the answer to those questions, there's a serious fundamental issue that needs to be resolved in, those, in that system. If you don't know how much grass you're growing, what you're capable of growing, and how many cows that farm is capable of stocking rate. And if we want to, and we, we've put up a blueprint here of increasing our, 
the grass utilization and being a more self-sufficient system and the target that we have set or kind of the blueprint is stocking our farms at 2.8 cows per hectare and utilizing 13 ton of dry matter per hectare now unfortunately and Mick has said it here there's an awful lot more farms currently stocked at 2.8 cows per hectare than there are utilizing 13 ton of dry matter which means on years like last year there's going to be big issues with reduction in grass growth because of overstocked farms for that farm's stocking rate capacity or grass growth capacity and here we have set kind of five key principles and different targets across the year to try and hit those targets of 2.8 and 13 ton dry matter utilized. And the first one is we need to grow 16 ton. How do we do that? We get 10 grazings per year and you'll see that in the, in the grazing demo. If we're growing 13 ton or 16 ton, 10 grazings, an average pre-grazing cover of 1,600 kilos, 15 to 1,600 kilos of dry matter per hectare. We want to spread 250 kilos of nitrogen, 500 kilos of concentrate, and produce 480 kilos of milk solids per hectare. And I suppose the main point in that is the first half of the board, because what you do in the spring sets your farm up for the rest of the year in terms of having nitrogen out early enough, starting grazing early enough, and starting the second rotation early enough so you can capture that extra grass in spring for the remainder of the year. Research has shown that every extra kilo grown by the the 10th of April will grow you an additional six kilos cumulatively for the remainder of the year. So the more grass that you can grow here in spring will grow you more grass cumulatively across the rest of the year. Uh, currently pasture based farms are growing somewhere around 950 to 1000 kilos dry matter per hectare by the 10th of April. The target we have set is 1500 kilos or just shy of 1500 kilos. So there's still a long way to go. How do we do that? The number of grazings ensure we start grazing early enough and finish the second rotation or start the second rotation on time and having enough nitrogen out um, to be able to grow that extra grass. How do we ensure that we actually do this? Well, opening farm cover, but not over supplementing our cows in the spring and reducing the amount of grass that we're utilizing as a result. And again, you can see the targets then across the rest of the year to try and hit those. And what this is, is it's that rather than just looking at the end of the year, see, look back and see, did you grow 16 ton? Did you achieve 10 grazings? How much milk solids did you achieve? These are the blueprints that you can check across the year to see, am I on target? Am I behind target? Or am I ahead target? And what can be done within the system to try and improve the amount of grass that you're growing and utilizing in that system? system as a result and I suppose autumn and spring why are we talking about autumn grazing we're currently the, the 3rd of July we're four weeks away from the 3rd of August when we need to start our autumn winter budget to set up our farm for the following spring which may sound a little silly but if you don't start your autumn budget on time it means you're not potentially not going to have high enough peak farm cover in autumn your closing farm cover is going to be too low and your opening farm cover next spring is not going to be high enough to carry the stocking rate that you have on your own farm or the calving pattern so peak farm cover. So once we get to the start of August, we want to extend our grazing rotation by two days per week or eight days per month so we can achieve this peak farm cover by early October of 450 kilos per cow or about 1,200 kilos dry matter per hectare. It's quite simple, but if we don't extend the raising rotation early enough in, April, in August, we can't achieve that. Our closing cover, our closing cover is going to be dictated by our spring demand, but we're seeing somewhere around 650 to 700 kilos by the 1st of December. That's closing cover, not housing date. You house your cows so you ensure that you have that cover on the 1st of December. And if you want to have an opening farm cover of 1,000, which is required for a 2.8 stocking rate at a 90% six-week calving rate, if we don't have that cover, opening farm cover of 1,000, it means an awful lot more supplementation going into those animals as a result in the spring. And a work that we've done here in Moorpark over the last three years, looking at farm covers of 1,000 versus 700 kilos, which is currently national average on pasture base, we're producing an additional 64 kilos of milk solids per hectare by the end of April or the 1st of May from having a farm cover of 1,000 versus 700 kilos. So that's a huge substantial increase in milk solids as well as a reduction in silage fed. So having that higher opening farm cover, we're feeding 200 kilos less silage to those cows and increasing milk solids. And if we look at that on a 40 hectare farm, it's worth about 13,000 euro additional milk sales and a reduction in silage cost as well. So those are the targets for the spring. In terms of start starting the second rotation, Mick already touched why we want to do it early April, but we don't want to drop our farm cover below 550. If we drop our farm cover below 550 when we start the second rotation, it means our farm cover is too low, our pre-grazing covers are too low, and we're now three weeks before breeding, three to four weeks before breeding, when we potentially have to put in an awful lot more supplementation as a result. And a build building in that silage reserve. So Mick talked about the bad year of 2018, and we potentially may get one again, hopefully not, but if we do, we need to build in that silage reserve into the system so we can cope with years like that. In terms of take-home messages, increasing the number of grazings, again, we must have the grazing infrastructure in place to do that. Grass 10 in the, in the grazing demo will cover that. But I suppose, first of all, what is your farm growing? 
what is it capable of growing and how many cows is that able to carry and what are you carrying at the moment and if they don't match up you need to look at the whole system and see how can you get them to match up F feed self-sufficiency again coming back to this blueprint so we can consistently feed low levels of concentrate and utilize maximum levels of grass and again nutrient use efficiency like brendan and mick has talked about earlier so if you have any questions we'll take them before the next group comes up Yep. Poaching paddocks. Ideally, you want to reduce, minimise the level of poaching. Um, again, that's back to what Mick talked about in grazing infrastructure. If you have adequate grazing infrastructure, it will allow you to get out early in spring and reduce or minimise the level of poaching. But if you severely poach paddocks, it will take a longer time for those to recover. We can, we can have one poaching event here, and we can get back to production. Two poaching events, we lose about two tonne. And a heavy soil, we'd lose about four tonne with two poaching events. 